Hello and welcome to Classic 15, our bite-sized coffee break podcast with me, Jack Pepper. Now, each episode, we welcome a star of the classical music world to hear their top tips on how to make a living in classical music. Today, we welcome Gabor Takash Naj, a founding member and leader of the celebrated Takash Quartet, working with them from 1975 to 1992. Then in 96, he founded the Takash Piano Trio before turning to conducting in 2002. He's music director of the Verbier Festival Chamber Orchestra and of the Manchester Camerata, one of the UK's leading chamber orchestras. He's also principal guest conductor of the Budapest Festival Orchestra and has guest conducted everywhere from Monte Carlo to Detroit. He's also a highly respected chamber music teacher, a professor in Geneva and an honorary member of London's Royal Academy of Music. Now, Gabor is a noted exponent of Hungarian music. So, when we spoke on a video call, I started by asking him how you find your repertoire, your niche. Is this a conscious process or does it just happen? Very interesting. Probably my answer is both. You know, many times with the string quartet in the Tokaj quartet or as a conductor, I am not choosing my own program because uh, the, the promoters or and, and the society is asking a, a special program. Of course, we are suggesting things, but many times it's just happening with which composers you feel at ease. But the Hungarians, of course, very near to me because Bartók Kodáj's and uh, least music, but especially Bartók and Kodáj, is based on the Hungarian folk music and Hungarian language. Of course, it's very near to my heart and brain and my being. But I have to say, Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven, the other love of my life, Hungarian music and the Wiener classical. So, Jack, I cannot say that I am uh, with a f- fantastic strategy and focus. I am working on the Hungarian repertoire. It just happened. And you were in a, a unique position as one of the founder members of the, the acclaimed Takash Quartet. Just, just take us back to when you helped set that group up. Why did you want to set up your own ensemble? What was the aim at that point and the impulse? Very interesting question. When I was 17 years old or 16, already I knew that I am, won't be a soloist. I never felt that I have this kind of special talent psychologically, physically, mentally for being a soloist. But I wanted to be very much a chamber music player. And I already met my later colleagues in the middle school when I was 16, 17, middle um, a musical specialized uh, music school in Budapest, and we already planned that we will play a string quartet. Also, uh, not last factor was that phenomenal geniuses were teaching in the 1970s um, chamber music and string quartet in the Francis Music Academy. Andras Mihai, George Kurtag, and Ferenc Rados, three genius. So we knew already at the age of 16, 17 that not only our life. Uh, uh, we'd like to be uh, quartet players, but wanted to meet these phenomenal mu- uh, teachers. So, Jack, I am the luckiest person in the world because I met three fantastic colleagues and three phenomenal teachers. So it's it's one thing you have to be very talented, motivated, hard worker, but we need luck also. Who are our teachers, who the fate puts together with which um, colleague? Uh, what would you say you, you learned from those early years and being part of this celebrated quartet? What would you say was the biggest lesson that you took away from being part of a, of a group For like that? Part of, I think, especially with these fantastic teachers, um, I think my, our musical morale went very, very high. We learned it and I learned it that behind every note, every harmony, there is a diamond. So, I, I mean, you cannot play a note with indifferently because um, the spiritual radiation is the most important of the music making. So each note has an inner life. Each note is coming from the bottom of the heart and the soul of the composer. So in order to radiate the great composer's spirituality, we must feel it. We also has to go up to this level spiritually, musically, mentally, whilst we're playing. So if you really want to be a, a great performer, an excellent performer, you really need to be, uh, practice and live everyday life, every day when you're practicing or analyzing a piece, somewhere 
on high alert, high intensity, spiritually, mentally. You know, a kind of readiness, alertness, non-stop. And I learned in the quartet that we are treasure hunters, literally. And finding behind every phrase, harmony, note, melody, the, the, the right spirituality. That must be a, a, a huge sort of tie as well as a musician to know that, you know, you can't switch off. I find this as a composer, Gabor. It's sort of the ideas don't stop at five o'clock in the same way when no, you're trying not, to... not stopping, not stopping. And, and I have to say something. I had a fantastic colleague, Gabor Ormai, who was the original viola player of the Stockach Quartet. And unfortunately, poor Gabor died of cancer. When I last time visited him, uh, he had only some months left. He was saying, you know, our life was non-stop alertness, never finished, 24 hours, this feeling that is learning, learning, getting higher and higher. If I'm getting out from my problem, which I, I want, he told me, but theoretically, if I would get out, I would go to to work in a McDonald's. And why? Because is, uh, the work starts at nine, finishing at five. And but, but but as a musician, you are nonstop on on twenty four hours on alertness. And and for you personally, Gabor, is that ever a negative? Does it ever become a tie? Uh, the sort of the ever alertness that you need when you're approaching music making. Have you ever burnt out? You know. I developed something psychologically. I'm dead honest with you. I felt that I need huge mental and, and psychological power when I am working with music. And that's why in many, many um, times in my life and in, uh, even today, sometimes I am, when people talking to me or I, I should do something, a very uh, everyday life job or something, I am sometimes very bad with it because I'm not focusing. I'm driving sometimes my wife crazy. I'm looking like a, somebody who, not a zombie, but a little bit on, on low level uh, intelligence sometimes. Because, but of course I'm not stupid, but, but I'm somewhere saving energy for my musical work. You know, but I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of this, what I'm telling you, but I, I have an alertness that I, I cannot be totally on, on high intensity every second of the daily world, uh, life, because I have to save myself for when I'm studying or concert. So how do you protect yourself then? Sort of practical steps that keep both your mind, but also your body, you know, as, as a player as well. How do you look after yourself? First of all, what I can tell also to young generation that I am every day doing a speed walk. Every morning, 30 minutes, very fast walk and try to walk as much as I can with my, my wife. I'm also swimming. I keep myself fit physically, mentally, as much as I can. And I try to sleep quite a lot. I'm also not drinking at all alcohol and also not getting overweight. So I try to live like a sportsman physically. I mean, not a sportsman, but a kind of uh, like a musician who is tries to look after his own body. And mentally, look, I love what I'm doing. It's a kind of hope. It's it's a hobby for me. So I don't have to think about any preparation. I am lucky because I love what I am doing. It's a hobby for me, but I'm keeping myself physically, mentally healthy. And incredibly important as you are an acclaimed conductor as well. We've talked about your, your career as a violinist, but you are also music director of the Manchester Camerata, one of the UK's leading chamber orchestras, your principal guest conductor of the Budapest Festival Orchestra as well. How do you make the leap, if I can describe it as that, from violinist uh, and player to conductor? Is it a big leap? Is it a transition? It's, it's, it's a transition. It's a, yes, yes, it's, it's a totally different thing because I'm not playing a note. I, I try to inspire and helping um, the musicians around me to play the way I imagine the, the pieces. But as a, as a quartet leader, physically, I already practiced the conductor's role. So it's not totally new, the, the change of my life. You know, because the body language and breathing and giving an upbeat for the group. I did it for 17 years in the Tokach Quartet. 
So it's not totally new, but I know that I am not playing, they are playing. So I think uh, lots of empathy and psychological alertness important for a conductor. I'm developing this and non-stop, non-stop writing me out for a paper, new thoughts about how can I be a more effective, more helpful conductor for orchestra. You know, I am try every day to learn something. I try every day learning something about this mysterious profession because this is mysterious. And and is this different for different ensembles? We've mentioned a couple of the groups you work with. I should also say you you, you conduct the Verbier Festival Chamber Orchestra, so you have a a kind of global collective of the finest young musicians there every summer. Are you a different conductor with them? Yeah. No, um, look, it's different with an orchestra, which is not every week meeting. If an orchestra is fresh mentally, physically, psychologically, like the uh, chamber orchestra of uh, Verbier, it's the work is, I am not so much alert um, what I am saying and what not saying, because it's uh, it's almost like a sing quartet so with friends. But if I am working with an orchestra, which is every week working, they are in a different mindset because they don't have so much freshness and openness. So I have to be myself, but psychologically I have to be very clever. So what do you look for then? When you're speaking about players that you work with, players in your orchestras and, and the Verbier Festival Chamber Orchestra, uh, what, what do you look for in, in, a, in a player? What, what should a player be for you? A player should be totally open without judgment for my ideas. Okay, she can, she or he can have his own feelings and, and, and style or taste, but I'm always looking for people who, and they are like this, who are open, open for any new ideas and immediately with a team spirit, they, 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 they radiating characters, colors. So they're not playing the physicality, but the spirituality of the notes. Now, but but if I am with an orchestra which is more tired because every week working and they're not fresh in the approach, I'm a little bit more, ad- I have to be a diplomat. So not saying everything which I would say to my friends, but very clever way um, um, pushing towards them to my way, but not too pushy, not openly enthusiastic way, which I can do with the Verbier Chamber Orchestra. But I, I myself, but a little bit sordino you know, on my crazy openness and energy. <laughs> I love that. You you have the dynamics of the music as well as a, as a conductor. The different levels of the piece you're you're conducting. So just, just so just just finally, Gabor, what would be your top tip then to a young or emerging musician listening now? What's the what's the most important thing that they should keep in their mind? In the coming days and weeks. Yes. In 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 two yes, yes. In today's world it's very, very important. Uh, all young musicians telling me that they have huge um, uh, how can I say they want to play very, very high level technically because the words in technological world and in every aspect of our daily life it the te- technique is, is very, very high and a big part of our life. But I am telling them, learn um, a technical uh, skill through music, through music, because technique is nothing else than the road to the musical goal. That is just a tool, is not the goal. The goal is the spiritual radiation. And also, I'd like to say something. Um, Every day, every day, inspire yourself. Self-inspiration is the secret. And don't wait for your professor to say what to do. You are your own professor. Your professor is only an advisor. Every day, with open-minded way, um, uh, look for new things in your playing and love even more what you do. If you love what you do, you are even more, even better in it. Inspiring advice from Gavor Takashnaj. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me, Jack Pepper, for this latest edition of Classic 15. All the episodes in the series are available on all the usual podcast platforms and online at classic.com. There you can also find all of Classic's latest news, opportunities, their online concert series and video on demand. 
And for the very latest, why not follow them on social media at Classic Music. Thanks so much for joining us. And until the next time, enjoy the music. <laughs>